Hello everybody, my name is Falkman and today I present to you the best possible stealth build in Cyberpunk 2.12. And this one focuses on two things. First thing are the stealth pistols, which allow you to one-tap most of the enemies that you face. And the second thing are quick hacks, which also allow you to one-tap most of the enemies or to crowd control them. It depends totally on your playstyle. And also don't worry, even though it is a stealth build, you can stand up to your enemies in combat. So this is overall a very flexible build in terms of playstyle and it is extremely powerful for leveling and it is even more powerful in the end game and this video is dedicated for both new players and advanced players so i will try to explain everything step by step but anyways just in case you're wondering if this is a quality video then let me just tell that i have over 1000 hours in cyberpunk i've been testing builds in this game left and right so you know this is probably the one of the most if not the most advanced stealth build guides out there on youtube and with this one i will explain to you the attributes and perks and which are essential for this build then i will jump to cyber and i will also tell you which is essential and which is not after this i will briefly talk about the weapons and which weapons work best with this build and also which silenced pistols are the best and how to get them and then after you know what weapons you're using what cyber you have and what talents you have i will explain to you the game plan so how to play with this build and additionally i will share some cool quick hack combos that can really help in stealth and dealing with enemies in general and lastly i will give you some leveling tips in which i will also explain the prioritization of attributes which may seem kind of confusing but don't worry i'll tell you all about it but yeah that is it for the intro so let's get this popping baby all right so this is basically how your attribute tree should look like at level 60 and as for this build i'd say the most important attribute trees are cool and intelligence so i would highly recommend and leveling those up first although i will talk about leveling later so for now let's talk about the perks so starting with intelligence this is basically what you want starting with the middle skill tree the most important perk here is the overclock and overclock basically is an ability that makes you use your health instead of ram for quick hacks if you run out of ram and it is extremely good for clearing elite enemies with system collapse or clearing entire levels of enemies with Synapse Burnout, but I will get into the detail of this during the game plan. And as for the perks around it, they basically help out with survivability and keep an overclock up. And the last ability of the middle tree basically makes overclock even stronger. But before I move on, there are other few major perks in this tree that are really important to this build. For example, Shadowrunner and Encryption, which help a lot with reducing traceability of quick hacks. And traceability can put up a challenge sometimes times because you know sonic shock has been either fixed or bugged anyways it's it's hard to say but it doesn't provide the negation effect anymore but this build is designed to deal with traceability and i will explain to you how during the gameplay section but also as i've said before quick hacks in this build are not just for dealing massive damage they are also great for crowd control and perks like ice pick and subordination help out with those as for the left perk tree there is no reason to max it out in my opinion for this build the double q is all that this build requires again i'll talk about the details later and the last perk that i wanted to mention here is the car hacker of course because it is just an easy way to deal with uh, car chases and that's it so now moving on to cool there is well a lot of cool stuff here first of all those three perks on the right basically are essential for any type of stealth build especially gag order it is absolutely phenomenal it gives you a little bit of time after damaging an enemy to finish him off before he alerts the rest of the enemies so it's just extremely helpful for stealth builds as for the middle tree there isn't much to talk about here it basically makes you less detectable and faster while stealthing and it also unlocks a perk called ninjutsu which allows you to crowd sprint which does come in handy but it does drain a lot of stamina but okay let's get into the nitty-gritty which is the left tree and that one is about pistols and you have two major abilities here focus and deadeye focus activates when you aim down sight while at full stamina and it makes your shots not consume stamina while it lasts but then when it ends it consumes 40 stamina but thanks to the perk no sweat if you neutralize two enemies there is no stamina loss from aiming down sights aka the focus mode and even though focus mode lasts only two and a half second thanks to the perk head to head it resets upon an elimination so that you don't have to get too sweaty with it and i know 
know this sounds weird and confusing as fuck at first, but don't worry, it is an automatic ability. You don't have to like keep track of your stamina bar before you start to aim down sides. It just like, it, it really doesn't matter that much. Especially that with this build, stamina bar is full most of the time. So you really don't have to worry about this. So now let me quickly explain that I When I saw this perk for the first time, I really thought it's going to be like in Overwatch or in Red Dead Redemption 2, where you get to like target a few enemies and then mold them down one by one. But unfortunately in Cyberpunk, it only makes your hip fire shots pinpoint accurate if you're above 85% stamina. Now it may be kind of a bitch to maintain if you keep crowd sprinting or dashing all over the place, but it gets much easier with the last perk of this attribute tree called run and gun, which basically negates the stamina drain for hip fire shots. Also the long shot perk makes hip fire shots don't lose damage from distance. So, you know, if you got the aim, you got the game. Now as for the nerves of tungsten steel, it is a really good perk, but it only affects revolvers if it comes to handguns. Okay, next tree is the technical ability. All the perks here mostly boost your cyber capacity and capabilities, and the last perk greatly increases the capacity, but also allows V to get into a fury state, which basically just increases damage. The only optional perk from the middle tree is the cyborg. It is optional because if you don't have enough cyber capacity to fill all the cyber slots, then it's not gonna work. But if you do, then it is really good. And as for the perks on the left side, they basically increase health item recharge speed and give you one more health item charge. Now, as for the reflexes, the middle tree makes you more slippery and also unlocks dash, which is fantastic for mobility and also unlocks air dash. Stun jock is optional. It makes you jump out of cars and motorbikes, so you don't really need it, but it kind of makes it for the flashy entrances. And as you can see, I have put the remaining perk points into SMGs here. You can literally put it into throwing knives or smart weapons or blades or whatever else you prefer. But I went with SMGs because Problem Solver is just OP. And you can also get the Air Karenzikov, which is phenomenal for stealth pistols. It can make you hover in the air and you can take out like three to four enemies during that time. It's really, really strong. But as I've said, this is completely optional. So now it is time for the last attribute tree, which is the body. And yeah, you, you, don't, you don't actually need anything here unless you feel like you're getting dumpstered in a fight when you get into combat, then you can put some perk points in here. But if you will have enough chrome and armor and also if you stay mobile in a, in a fight then you know it shouldn't be a problem to survive in a gunfight as I've said before. And lastly there is the relic tree. So if you decided to go with the monowire then jailbreak and data tunneling is really good if you get into combat. Also vulnerability and machine learning is really really good for boss fights. Emergency cloaking allows you to get out of combat if you use optical camo while in combat. But yeah this is all for the perks and attributes if it comes to this build so now let me tell you about the cyberware and here first i'll tell you about the most essential cyberware and then i'll tell you about the ones that are optional starting with the frontal cortex all that you can find here is essential memory boost is fantastic for keeping your ram up after neutralizing enemies x disk is also fantastic because it gives you a lot of ram and it also makes your quick hex upload faster the crown jewel of this build is the cox 2 cyber somatic optimizer this allows your quick hex to deal crits and it also gives those quick hacks 100% crit chance. So yeah, if you have it, you can probably clear whole levels of enemies with Synapse Burnout. But don't worry if you don't have enough cyber capacity or if you don't have enough eddies or if you haven't started Phantom Liberty yet because this one you can only get after starting Phantom Liberty, then you can get RAM upgrade, which honestly is a great replacement until you get the Cox 2 Cyber Somatic Optimizer. Next essential thing is RAM Recoup. It gives you plus to RAM, a nice chunk of armor, and it also helps in combat. And it's also pretty cheap, it only costs 11 cyberware points. Another must have for this build is visual cortex support, which increases crit chance the farther you are from enemies, and mostly you are a distance away, so it really helps. Terrazine injector is also very good for this build, it gives you really good bonuses for takedowns, and takedowns are really easy to perform with this build, I will explain the gameplay section. Next thing is the optical camo, which I don't even 
have to introduce i think it just makes you almost invisible it really helps with stealth and if you have this one perk in relic tree then you can literally just lose your enemies if you pop it mid combat next thing reinforced tendons double jump need i say more then there is biomonitor which automatically heals v after dropping to a certain threshold of health and this one is mostly to help out in combat or when you pop overclock then there is heal and kill which replenishes health upon eliminations smart link is also for the extra ram but it's very cheap so i'd also put it in this build even if you don't use smart weapons at all it's really great for the extra ram also the coco trees kiroshis they give you much more crit chance so they just increase your damage it's really really good and the last and the biggest one of the essentials there is the big boy cyber deck and that one is arasaka mk5 every bonus effect of this deck basically screams stealth build so i don't think there is a better one for this but essentially with this deck enemies take 100 longer to trace your location after quick hacking which is fantastic it makes covered quick hacks cheaper it gives plus five ram for a takedown which is a lot but the best thing about this cyber deck is that if you pop overclock your quick hacks do not add up to the traceability it is massive it is solid it just fits this build like nothing else so as i've said these are the essential cyberware i highly recommend getting those things first and then focusing about the optional ones so now let me talk about those first of all for the arm cyberware you can literally put whatever you want in here i decided to go with monowire because it combos well with contagion if you get into combat but gorilla arms are also for example very viable to help with body checks since the body skill is low with this build going to the skeleton epimorphic skeleton and kinetic frame are basically there to boost your survivability if you get into combat but if you don't have enough cyber work capacity to get epimorphic skeleton then i highly recommend using universal booster instead next in the nervous system there is the karenzikov which you can completely skip if you're not into karenzikov or if you're not using the air karenzikov and you can go for the neo fiber instead for example to further increase your mitigation chance and in the integumentary system there is the pain inducer which is there to help in combat and subdermal armor is just extra armor for very little cyber capacity and then going to the circulatory system there is the clutch padding and this one is very good if you mostly want to focus on weapons with this build and only use quick hacks occasionally but if you want to boost your quick hacking game then you can go for the blood pump which is the best healing item in the game and it will basically allow you to keep up over clock longer and what comes with it cast more quick hacks with it the decision is your and lastly there is the shock absorber which helps with the gun handling and that is it for the optionals actually that's it for the cyber red. so now let's go to the weapons and since it is a stealth pistol build besides the quick hex of course there are a lot of good stealth pistols in cyberpunk but there is one that really stands out from the others and i think it's easily the best stealth gun in the game and that is death in texas it's still the goat just like in the previous version of the game and it's still shoots two projectiles although now it's like one following the other not two simultaneously and additionally to this it does shit load of damage so with this gun it is easy to just one tap well basically two tap enemies but you know what i mean and if you level up your headhunter skill and get this passive for v then you can even one tap elites which is massive another great thing about this gun is that you can get it very early in the game basically right after finishing the prologue and all that you gotta do is just follow judy's quest line and once you meet a woman named Maiko, just search her office and you'll find the gun. The only bad side to this gun though is that it drains a bit of HP with every shot. But if you got heal and kill installed in your cyber, then that shouldn't be a problem since it one taps all the regular enemies. So as I've said, I'd say this is the best gun for this build. But if you don't like that it shoots two bullets or you want to use some other gun, then here are a few other great ones. First one is Mancinella. It has really good damage and really good headshot modifier. And additionally, it has the passive from Headhunter already in its stats. But just remember, it is a revolver, not a pistol. So if you really want to pop up with it, remember about getting nerves of tungsten steel. This one you get kind of late in the game because you get it after doing a questline related to Mr. Hands, which you get after finishing the DLC. So it is a long way to get there. But this one is really, really good, especially in the late game 
game. Anyways, before we get this one, I highly recommend getting Seraph, which is really good for leveling, but not so great in the late game. It has good damage, good headshot modifier, and it's easy to get it, just finish all Padres missions. And an honorable mention here is Her Majesty, also a very good gun, and you get it by following the DLC story. So what about the other weapons, you might ask? Well, let me tell you, <laughs> they really don't matter that much. You already have so many weapons in your arsenal with the silenced pistols and quick hacks that you don't really need anything else. But what I additionally like to use with this build is Problem Solver since I went for SMGs, because it's just really strong and works great in combat and in stealth. Overwatch is also an option to use with this build, but I just prefer to go with silenced pistols because they're not as clanky and they're more mobile. But as for the combat weapon, it's either Malorian or Shinjin prototype. And I'll talk more about Shinjin in the game plan section. And lastly, here are the quick hacks that I use for this build in the late game. But the most important ones, I'd say, are System Collapse and Synapse Burnout for some giga damage, but also Sonic Shock and Memory Wipe to boost the damage of Synapse Burnout or for some crowd control. Short Circuit is good for robots and mechs, and Contagion is awesome for fast clearing or for combat scenarios. Alright, but now let's get to the juicy part which is the game plan and to be honest it is actually quite easy as i've said you have a lot of weapons in your arsenal so it is totally up to you how you deal with the enemies but essentially here is how things go there are two types of enemies in cyberpunk there are the regular goons which don't have that much hp and there are elites which do have a lot of hp they hit harder and then sometimes even have cyberware like um, santa vista or something so the basic plan is to take out out the regular enemies with your stealth pistol because it usually does enough damage to just one tap them if you score a headshot but if it comes to the elite enemies it usually takes more than one headshot to take them out so you can either use takedowns or quick hacks the obvious choice here is sonic shock followed by a synapse burnout if you have the cox 2 cyber somatic optimizer equipped but if you don't have it then overclocking and system collapse should take them out also you can use the memory wipe in instead of Sonic Shock with that combo because that way it won't trigger the traceability. Also, you can perform takedowns on them even though they look scary, they are all very much susceptible to the bonk in the head. Quick hacks that allow you for easy takedowns are Sonic Shock and Memory Boost. If you cast one or the other on the enemy, it stuns them for a brief moment and sets them up for an easy takedown. And just in case you didn't know, you can also cast Memory Wipe in combat, allowing you to take down enemies in combat as well and it really works great with humanoid bosses which you can really just take out instantly without even fighting them just remember that if you use it on bosses like oda or sasquatch then it usually takes a few takedowns to take them out and i do realize that this is quite a lot of info to take in at first but believe me once you start playing and figuring this build out yourself then it's really really easy but regardless of that let me show you the example clear of an enemy encampment with this build as I've said, first of all, it's best to focus on the regular enemies since it is the easiest to take them out with the silenced pistols. And here you also can see the air Kerenzikov and how it actually works in the game. Uh, and this enemy right there, as you can see, it's an elite enemy, so I memory wipe him so that it is set up for an easy takedown. And here I am just continuing on eliminating more bad guys here with Air Karenzikov because it's just really, really good for this build. Here's an elite enemy, so I use System Collapse and this one had a reduced cost because I reduced tracing progress with either a takedown or memory wipe. It's hard to say, maybe with both. And here are more elite enemies. I don't have enough RAM, so I overclock, use System Collapse on the first one and I don't have enough RAM on the second guy, so I use the Sonic Shock and Synapse Burnout combo and the last guy i got enough rem so i just system collapse on that guy and technically that is area clear but there are a few guys that are spawning outside for some reason so i just take these bad guys out and that's area clear man so now i'll just briefly tell you how to deal with a combat situation so if you get out of stealth 
and that is actually quite easy just to use contagion on a bunch of enemies and then you can either smack them with the mono wire or shoot them with Shinjin prototype and that is because these weapons have a decent burn chance and if you set an enemy on fire that is affected by contagion they explode but if you don't want to use that combo then you can use johnny's gun or problem solver if you also spec for smgs or any weapon that you want and yeah that is all the info i have about this build so now let's go into the last category which is the leveling and i have quite a lot of sweet tips for you right here but this video is mega long so i'll try to make it quick right here all right so buckle up all right so first things first you're starting the game put three points into cool three points into intelligence and one point into technical ability then you prioritize cool and intelligence and level both up to 15 then you focus on the technical ability to get it up to 15 and then you can start putting some points into reflexes to get the dash ability and then focusing on leveling up cool intelligence and technical ability to the maximum as for the quick hacks to use while leveling i highly recommend getting overheat and sonic shock for the embedded exploit combo this usually melts most of the regular enemies and for the one hp bar you don't even have to use sonic shock with it and as for the elites you can use the same combo and you can then finish them off with a silenced pistol but if you get a blue version of a cyber deck then you can also put blue memory wipe in there because blue is like the first rarity of memory wipe and synapse burnout also starts at blue as for the tips first one is going to be about perk shards there are 10 perk shards in total scattered around night city and i do have a video of locations of these perk shards so check it out go get them it's 10 extra perk points for v it's really really useful next tip is about leveling up your skills it's extremely important because that unlocks additional perk points and some really good abilities for v and you normally just get this xp while you play but you can get some additional xp for closing or opening shafts shutting down cameras or even dismantling and crafting items another tip is about the buffs you can get an xp buff for getting a good night's sleep stamina buff for taking a shower and speaking of buffs they're also consumables so drinking and eating gives you stamina and hp buff but one of the best consumables for this build is ram jolt which gives you additional ram the next thing is the clothing it cannot get you op just like it did in the previous versions of the game but it can help a lot for example having a tactical vest increases your reload speed and having a balaclava decreases the enemy detection rate which is very helpful just remember to get a transmog because v in a balaclava usually looks like a fucking dumbass what do you think i look like a dick another important thing is upgrading your shit remember as the levels go through to upgrade your stuff and i highly recommend spending your precious materials on iconic weapons especially silenced pistols and if it comes to the cyber the most important thing to upgrade is of course the cyber deck but as for the other cyber i'd say upgrading it isn't really worth the materials i personally would rather buy the new rarity once it shows up in the ripper dogs inventory and then actually focus on upgrading all the other stuff once you get everything and legendary so that you can get it on 5 plus plus and also there are two things about upgrading your cyberware first of all when you do that remember to get the chip work connoisseur you can just slot a perk point there and then take it out once you're done upgrading but it really helps with min maxing this build especially on higher levels it allows you to choose from certain sets of stats modifiers which benefit your build the most and as for this build i'd say the most important ones are increased stealth damage increased headshot multiplier and decreased enemy vision but then if you want to boost your quick hacking game then good modifiers are ram recovery per neutralization and quick hack damage all right so that is it for all the guide man i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it was helpful if this is the build that you were looking for and uh yeah have fun with it man and if you're looking for other builds i do have some other videos on my channel as well so feel free to check them out but if you enjoyed this one then please remember to drop a like or even a comment or both it really helps me out a lot and of course remember to subscribe if you like cyberpunk content i have a lot of this on my channel but currently i'm mostly focusing on streaming so if you want to catch me live then go follow me on twitch man so yeah once again thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you later see ya